Hello and welcome again to another edition of James and Chris Science Videos, where today we're going to look at the topic of dissolving. And we're going to look at what it is and some of the key terms that are involved with it. And maybe show you a couple of things to really explain how it works. So, very simply, what, what is dissolving? Well, dissolving is where we put a solid, it can be a gas, into a liquid, give it a stir, and after a period of time, that salt that I've put in appears to have disappeared. It obviously hasn't, so there's evidence that I could find to show you that it's there. For example, if, if that was salt and water, I tasted that, that water would taste salty. And so the, the water and the salt are both in there together. Where has the salt particles gone? Well, that is the question. And hopefully you remember from my previous episode of Change of State that the particles inside a liquid, I'm very sorry for not drawing this with a ruler, very bad science teaching. We had the particles of a liquid close as we can together and all higgledy-piggledy. But the very nature of their higgledy-piggledy has given us gaps in between the particles in which we can keep and hide other particles. So what essentially is happening is that we mix them together, the two aren't joining, but the smaller particles of sodium chloride will fit in the gaps of the slightly larger um, particles of water, or whichever one way around it is. Now to show that, this is quite a nice little demonstration. Here I've got 400 millilitres of water, and here I've got 400 millilitres of salt. So if I add the two together, what do you think we should get as a reading? So let's have a look, let's find out. So 400 in here, 400 in there, and we pour them in. And we go very slowly. And if we look combined, it only goes up to the 600 mark. So that's just, a sign that these gaps in between the particles are where it's going. So let's have a look at some of the terminology that we use in terms of dissolving. Because we're not always going to use salt, this is table salt, sodium chloride, we're not always going to use water, this is just common tap water. Sometimes we could use different liquids, sometimes we use different solids or gases in order to dissolve it into the liquid. So we need some terminology that we can use to standardise what we're looking at. So in terms of science, the words we use, the liquid that is going to do the dissolving, we are going to call a solvent. A solvent. The solid that we're going to use, we are going to use the words from now on, solute. So there's no really way, easy way of remembering this. You've just got to remember that a liquid is called a solvent and that the solid is called the solute. When we put them together and we mix them together, we end up with something called a solution. So a solution would be these two added together. And I want, I want to show you that in a second, but I, I want to show it on this machine here so we can speed up the process. So here's my solvent, here's my water. And I'm going to put that onto here. Um, this is just a little magnet that we're going to put in the bottom. And I'm going to pour my solute into this, making a solution. Now, at the moment, you can still see the solute at the bottom, so that hasn't mixed. And what this will do, the little magnet inside starts to spin. There's an electromagnet in here that spins. And if I put that onto there, That'll stir it, and eventually all of the solute, all of the solute will have found the spaces between the molecules and will have fully dissolved, creating a solution. So what other names could we use for the solvents? What other things could we use? So here's water. I could have used alcohol. I could have used acetone. Uh, anything that is a liquid we could use, that is of one 
particular chemical. The solute will be anything that can dissolve. Now that will be slightly different. We're going to talk about two terms in a second of things that can and things that can't dissolve. But a solute is something you are going to put into this. and can be any solid, really, as long as it will dissolve. The two terms that we've got for them are soluble. Soluble means can dissolve. And there's going to be different rates that things can dissolve with. So soluble being number one. In terms of not being able to dissolve, let's do this properly, we have got insoluble. So using the prefix of in to say can't. So something that is insoluble will not dissolve. So a great example of this, if you ever try putting chalk or flour into water, um, it won't dissolve. Whereas sugar, sodium chloride, things like that, will dissolve very quickly. So when we look at this and we put our solution in, I've given you some clues on this already. How can I speed up how quickly this dissolves? So I put my solute into my solvent. What can I do to speed up the rate of the dissolver? Um, the first guy I've given was this device here. And again, now that the salt, the solute has fully dissolved, you can see my little bean inside spinning. And basically, what is that? Well, if we move the particles around, they're much more likely to find those gaps. So we call that stirring. Stirring will increase the speed in which it dissolves. What else could I do? Well, I can increase the amount of solvent. Therefore, I've got more spaces. Therefore, it will dissolve quicker. I could raise the temperature. By raising the temperature, I'm allowing the particles to move around more, and therefore, because particles are moving quicker, they will move the salt or the solute to those gaps much faster. So there are ways in which we can increase the speed of dissolving. The last point that I want to make is the word saturation. Now, saturation is the point by which I can no longer dissolve any more. In other words, all the gaps have been filled. So in terms of sodium chloride in water, the saturation point is 35.7 grams in 100 milliliters. So here I've got 300 milliliters, which means I would need to do 105 grams and if I went a little bit over 100 grams it doesn't matter how much I stir it there would always be some salt at the bottom and so it, we couldn't fit any more in that by the way I should say is at 25 degrees Celsius if I increase the temperature I make the gaps bigger therefore the saturation point will go up so in 40 degrees Celsius I can dissolve 40 grams of salt rather than the 35.7 Excellent. Um, well, thank you very much for watching. Again, I will try and put a Google document uh, worksheet where you can, again, have a look at these words and remind yourself of some of the terms. Also, I've put a Sporkle quiz that will, again, remind you of all of these key terms and enable you to practice using those words. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.